Hey everyone, I'm Jamie. I'm really excited to be here today at TS Congress and I hope that you're all having a fantastic time so far. There are so many amazing speakers and talks lined up. I'm really excited to check those out and catch up, but obviously after this talk. We only have a few minutes together today really to go through some slides and a demo, so I think we should dive right into the topic that is unifying data sources with GraphQL. Now, if you're building a API, it doesn't matter if that REST if that API is REST or if that's GraphQL, it's pretty hard. Yes, it's easy to install a dependency, create some type definitions with GraphQL, and then create some resolvers and then deploy it. It's easy to do that, but there are so many other things to consider when building something scalable that you want to deploy to production at the edge, hopefully, um, for your users to use and consume. Uh, and this, is, this list that you see here is really only a small snapshot into some of the concerns that you have to kind of think about when building something scalable. Uh, unmaintainable uh, in production. But I think the biggest problem today, uh, it's, a, it's a great benefit to have, but the biggest problem is that we have so many different data sources today that we all have to figure out how to use all of the APIs and SDKs. Well, they all differ as well. There's a different learning curve. There's different types of documentation. Some are more documented than others. Some take no time at all to get started and some take days to figure out. And because we're using so many of these services now to deliver our end products, well, it can often just be really time consuming to do that. I think the simplest to-do app that we all used to do and build when we first got started with something, I think in today's world with all of these different data sources, I think there is so many different implementations of that now where maybe you create a to-do app that when you add a to-do, it sends you a notification via Slack or email or SMS. So there's three services. And then maybe is when you add something or remove something or check something or uncheck something, maybe that goes on to find spots in your calendar that are free so you can actually find time to do these to do's. <laughs> so yeah, there are so many, uh, so many things uh, to consider when building apps with all of these different data sources. And it's great that we've got this flexibility. Um, but yeah, like I say, the downsides is some of these APIs have better documentation, some of them don't. Um, but the biggest thing I think with this is that all of the different services that we use today, they aren't really focused on where the data maybe lives, because they know that they could just rely on someone using some caching or, or a static site generator or something. So most of these just deploy to a single region. Um, but of course, if we want to use all of these different services, that data really should be at the edge closest to the user so that you can get the, you know, the best experience when using your application that obviously you create using TypeScript. So, and I think when all of these APIs, they're deployed to a single region. Obviously, you can pay to maybe deploy it to other regions, but I think that's just something that we all should have the flexibility to do to do and configure on our own um, because there are so many services that don't give you that flexibility um, when you really want it. And maybe if you are to get that from a service provider, they may charge you a lot more to do that. So that's the one thing that we are on a mission to solve at GraphBase. And we allow developers to connect any type of database, maybe a warehouse or, or a commerce application like Shopify. If you have a product in Shopify that you want to extend with uh, more products or reviews, you might want to get those reviews from a different API. Maybe you have some content in HiGraph or Contentful or Sanity that you want to add to these product pages. Well, we give you the ability to kind of add data sources, extend them and add your own custom code and, and do other things. So we're on a mission to do that, to create this single GraphQL API that you can bring different data sources in with um, and then your different front ends as well. And with all of this, you have full type safety on the back end, full type safety on the front end with that unified GraphQL API. And there's so many cool tools uh, to do that. And the other thing that GraphBase does is obviously it has this unified GraphQL API where all of these data sources live. And then on top of that, you can add things like auth. So you can bring your own auth provider like Click or Auth0. And then you can say, this user can update, but can't delete, uh, or they can read and not write. All of that can kind of be configured within the configuration, but the actual user management happens elsewhere. So you can bring your own users essentially um, to, to use the API and the connected databases. Uh, as well. And then on top of that, we obviously mentioned previously about kind of how important it is to have data readily available at the edge close to the user. Well, 
we do that with caching um, at the edge as well. So that's baked in to all projects that you can take advantage of. Then when you deploy this to production, if you open a branch on GitHub, we'll automatically create you a preview URL that you're very used to, uh, no doubt with things like Vercel and Netlify, they give you uh, that immutable URL that you can use. We do the same for GraphQL, we'll give you that new API endpoint. Um, so you don't have to think about, you know, figuring how can I build that myself? That just comes for free out of the box. We also have other products like search um, and then analytics as well. So you can get full insights into what's going on uh, with your project. And like I mentioned before, this works with anything that you're using today. Wherever you can make a fetch request, you can use GraphBase. Um, but the, the important thing that I wanna highlight is GraphQL and TypeScript, they work very well together because of the type system. GraphQL strongly type, strong type system can be used with things like the GraphQL code generator to generate all of the TypeScript types for all of your GraphQL types and maybe it's your GraphQL queries and mutations and if they have inputs and arguments, some are required, some are optional, the code generator can create something in TypeScript that maps to that. So when you're using uh, GraphBase and you're creating your own custom resolvers, you can use all of that code, uh, that, all of that generated code to create something that's fully type safe from the back end to the front end, which I think is really powerful. But the topic that I really want to cover today and show in the demo next is actually when we started to build GraphBase, we had a single GraphQL SDL as configuration. So on the left here, you can see there is a schema and then we have this custom directive called auth that you would then configure all of your different auth providers with. So this open ID connect provider could be something like clerk or it could be auth zero or something else. Uh, you can then add that as an auth provider and then you can specify a list of rules. We just have one rule here, which is allow private, but then that would add some rules to your backend to only allow authenticated requests. Then below that, we have this GraphQL tag, which is defined in a namespace, the URL to the uh, Shopify store or to the Contentful store. And then we have some uh, headers as well. Here we've just got a custom Shopify header. If you were to use this with uh, Shopify, if you were to use this with Contentful, you could obviously pass through different headers and then those would go on um, when you make that kind of request to the, the different providers. So yeah, this is the SDL that people had to use for so long. And it's fantastic, I still use it today. I also use the new TypeScript configuration, but the SDL was uh, really nice. But the thing that it didn't give developers was it didn't give you any hints into what was going on with uh, all of the different kind of configuration and options. You didn't get any help from TypeScript or the code editor when you were configuring backends with SDL. So that's why when we spoke to the community, we noticed that a lot of people were looking for uh, a way to create something that was type safe. So we built the GraphBase SDK. The team put together a proposal. We spoke to the community and they said, wow, this is great. Um, how can I use this? So we started to build the SDK, which allows you to import things like auth, config, connector, schema, and then you can create models from that. You can then connect things. And as you're typing, you can use TypeScript to its full advantage to make sure that you're passing a string where a string should be invoked, an integer, etc., cetera, um, and things like the headers API. We make sure that you can customize and specify the right kind of uh, keys and values there and no one's gonna mess those up. So you get that full type safety, which we love as well, um, thanks to TypeScript. And I think the other thing when you're uh, building GraphQL queries in resolvers that are custom to you, so you're building these within GraphBase, you can configure all of the different kind of arguments that those have. Uh, and you know if there is any optional fields, you can declare that inside of here and TypeScript helps you generate that SDL automatically. Um, but yeah, I wanna jump into a demo now. Now we'll open our code editor. Imagine this was your front-end application and you wanted to create a back-end for your front-end. You can use the graph-based CLI to initialize a new project. And then of course we want to use TypeScript as that config option. I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm gonna invoke some steps that I've created earlier so we can update and change how this configuration looks. But as we explore this file, we can now see that we can hover over things and we can invoke things and we get full help thanks to TypeScript with all of these kind of uh, descriptions and options that are available uh, inside of our code editor. So 
we love this experience now and we think that our developers do too. They tell us they do. Uh, and we're really excited to kind of expand on this builder pattern uh, of, of building uh, APIs. So let's get started by creating a query here. We have some arguments that are optional. Now we'll go over to the file that we have, hello.ts. Here we have a TypeScript function. We can import SDKs and whatever inside of here, uh, but this is TypeScript. We're able to create a TypeScript uh, resolver that will later deploy to the edge. I think now, with this resolver, we should start the GraphQL server. And then if we head on over to the port 4000, we can launch Pathfinder. And this schema and that we see here, this was all generated from that TypeScript config. So we didn't have to worry about writing GraphQL SDL. We were able to just use TypeScript and forget about that uh, you need to know GraphQL to build a backend. You don't, you can use TypeScript to build these backends. So as we run the, the next step now, we can create uh, another mutation to RSVP to an event, maybe something like this. Then we can define some things like enums and inputs and a mutation. And uh, we have a file now that accepts some parameters. All of this that we have here is type safe. So you can work uh, with TypeScript and GraphBase to create these backends. Um, and you don't have to wait until you start the server to run into errors. We'll tell you if there is something up before you get there. And as you can see, the schema for GraphQL has been updated automatically using that TypeScript config that was converted uh, to create this GraphQL API that you can then use for your front end. So let's execute a mutation, a mutation here with GraphQL. We will uh, RSVP to the event. Uh, we can pass along our name and our status here, which is an enum in GraphQL. Uh, and you know we can send different enum values if we want to. And then when we run that, uh, that, that operation here, uh, that will return the data to us. So that is, that is basically a custom GraphQL query and mutation using TypeScript that was configured using TypeScript inside of our graph base repo. Uh, next, we can do things like connect things like Stripe using the open API connector. And then here, thanks to TypeScript, we know exactly what we need to pass, things like headers, what the key is, what the value can be, uh, and the same with transforms as well. We can transform the schema to exclude certain fields and queries and mutations. And again, thanks to TypeScript, we get all of this help before when we use an SDL, none of our users could do that just inside the code editor alone. They were always having to go to the documentation to reference what they could and couldn't do. And that took up a lot of time and people weren't deploying and building applications for quicker. Um, but I think now with TypeScript, they are, uh, it's fantastic. So with that open API connector added and with the server running, we get all of the Stripe API here in GraphQL, thanks to the open API spec, we take that and transform that into GraphQL. And users of GraphBase that wanna build these backends don't have to worry about learning GraphQL really from a server point. We'll abstract all of that complexity for you. Uh, and things like passing headers here, we can see we forward uh, from the client to the underlying service, in this case it's Stripe, and we update that. And when you make a request from the front end, we'll just pass that right along to, to Stripe, which is cool. Um, and you know, there's things like logging, so you can dive in and, and figure out exactly what's going on if, if things do go wrong instead of your resolver. Next, let's extend the Stripe API. Here we have a Stripe customer. The Stripe customer is the type in GraphQL for uh, the Stripe customer, but users don't have a Gravatar field. So I think we should add one. Here is some custom code inside of our resolver that is fetching the email from that Stripe customer, and then it's creating that Gravatar URL, and then it's just gonna return a string. So now with that running, if we go to Pathfinder, and we close the headers tab, we should now be able to invoke that Gravatar field that didn't exist before, that doesn't exist with Stripe, but we've been, but we've been able to extend the Stripe API with GraphBase using TypeScript. Now we can pass a different value uh, in the arguments here, and we can get a different link to get a different image size. So that has been extending Stripe uh, with, with, with GraphBase and with TypeScript. And all we really had to do was configure what that looked like using the SDK and then writing that code. And lastly, 
We'll look at caching where you can configure different rules. So here we have the Stripe customer. We don't want to cache anything else but our Stripe customer because generating that URL uh, for, for the Gravatar image, well, that might take a little bit longer. We don't want to wait for it. So let's cache that URL response so we can configure at a kind of a, a type level, a field level, whatever you want. You can configure that with Graphbase. And then when you deploy that to the edge and you make a query, uh, that will be cached. So inside of here, this is when the project's deployed with uh, Graphbase. We can open that project inside of the dashboard. And here we can see we haven't passed that header along. So our API is protected. Now, if we pass along the authorization header for Stripe, this is our secret key with Stripe. We now run that operation and that will be successful. And we get that Gravatar URL. But if we open the history here, we can see that we have a cache miss. Now, if we execute that again, we should get a cache hit. And we can see the difference in time here. The response time has gone down significantly thanks to that caching that's happening at the edge. So this has been one field extending one API, but imagine all of the different data sources that you use, bringing that into a unified GraphQL API can considerably save time and cost um, for, for building applications. So hopefully this has been Interesting. Um, we think developers can build really cool backends with Graphbase and they can still go on to use TypeScript to create custom code where they want to inside of those custom resolvers. But then to configure all of this, you don't need to learn GraphQL. Uh, on a server side, you can just use that TypeScript configuration uh, and the SDK to build the backend for you, which is pretty powerful. And that's why we love TypeScript. So if you're interested to learn more about this, uh, you can go to graphbase.com. And if you've got any questions, please feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. I'm at NoTrab. That's just Barton backwards if anyone's wondering. Um, I'm happy to answer anything about Graphbase and, and GraphQL over there. So thanks very much for having me today.